Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Freedom. When we think of freedom, we sometimes think of what isn't freedom, that which is opposite of freedom. Imprisonment. There's a very famous example of a person who was tried and sent to prison by an unjust government. He was in prison from the time of my birth until I was halfway through my military career, almost 30 years. Nelson Mandela, who recently passed, spent almost a third of his 95-year life in prison. In our minds, this is the opposite of freedom, to be in prison, to be in chains, to be locked up is to be not free. Unfortunately, we think we understand and know what freedom is. But as we deceive ourselves into thinking this, that we have freedom, I mean our Constitution guarantees it, no one can take it away from us. It's an inalienable right. One that they couldn't take away if they wanted to. But we walk around as slaves, saying and doing the things that slaves do, acting and talking like those who are in prison. Pastor, you might say, I'm not in prison. I got in my car and I freely came to church today. I'm not in prison. We are all in prisons of our own making. What is important to you? I'm not talking about realistic concerns, satisfying basic needs. I'm talking about those things that we indulge in to the point of excess. Those things that we satiate our desires more than we should. To the exclusion of what we know to be God-pleasing time and efforts. Is it the comfort of knowing that you have enough? Is that the thing that gobbles up all your time? Just the right amount of things. Then materialism is your taskmaster and greed is your prison. Is satisfying your need to fill your belly or get enough drink? If that's your dominant thing, then gluttony is your taskmaster and drunkenness your prison. Maybe... It has the appearance of keeping up with the Joneses or being concerned with appearances. If that's what consumes your time, then vanity and pride are tending your cell and envy is your prison. Or is it that you cannot be troubled with school or work or responsibilities? Then laziness is your prison keeper and sloth is your institution. Oh, you don't suffer from any of these self-made prisons, you might say? Then maybe self-righteousness is your taskmaster and hypocrisy is your prison. Now that I have identified us all as materialistic, greedy, gluttonous drunkards <laughs> who suffer from vain envy and pride, and who are too lazy and slothful to realize our self-righteous hypocrisy. Oh, and by the way, we are also murderous, thieving liars. <laughs> it's almost comical when I say it all out like that. Just put it out in front of us. Especially on the day when I'll be preaching this exact same sermon at the children's program later this morning. But on a daily basis, we are all, at least in some way, guilty of some part of that terrible list of sins I just listed. And even if we fool ourselves into thinking that we're doing a really good job, we always have the words of James to remind us that if we break just one little bit, we are guilty of the whole thing. So. We may think we are free, at least as we might define freedom. 
But as you can see, we are all in chains. <clears throat> what does Nelson Mandela have to do with a text about freedom? In his words, to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. Now this is a beautiful sentiment spoken by a very well-spoken man. But I've been trying to cast off the chains of this particular prison for over 50 years and still have not cast off my chains of sin and probably won't until I stop breathing. And respecting the freedom of others is a good example of following the second table of the law. Again, even though we try with God's help, we often fail. Falling short of loving our neighbor as ourselves. Nelson Mandela was a good Methodist and a great voice of freedom against injustice in South Africa and throughout the world for that matter. But let's look at what the Gospel has to say. The Gospel of John, today's text about freedom. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Christ is that Word that spoke all that is into existence. And during the Advent season, we anticipate, we look forward anxiously, awaiting in this penitent season for the arrival of the Word made flesh come to redeem his creation and set it free. All things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He is the source of light. He is the source of life. And there is no dark prison cell that his light does not shine into and destroy. John, the writer of the gospel, bears witness about this light that all might believe through him. The true light that enlightens everyone. Come into the world. He was in the world he made the world, even as the world did not know or accept him. He came to redeem that world. Return it to its very good, original pre-sin condition. He came to his own, but his own people did not receive him. But through his birth, life, death, resurrection, and eventual return, he made us all his own. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. That, brothers and sisters in Christ, is true freedom. Freedom that we did not earn. So it is certain and without blemish or doubt because we can't mess it up. The Son of God in the person and work of Jesus Christ makes you free from all the taskmasters and all the prisons that we create for ourselves. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. <clears throat> and now I bear witness about him. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. His glory spoke all that is into existence. His glory made a promise to Abraham. His glory hovered over the tabernacle in a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. His glory spoke through the prophets. His glory in human flesh slept in an animal's feeding trough. His glory bled and died for us on a cross. 
His glory ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. His glory was placed on you in the waters of holy baptism. His glory feeds you in the Lord's Supper. His glory will come again and reclaim you as his own. His glorious heavens and earth where we will be with him forever, for all eternity. For his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, enabling us in this existence with his help to live in a way that respects and embraces the freedom of others. In Jesus' name, amen.